Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to install new press fit bottom bracket bearings into your bike using the Burton Bikes bearing press tool. This is available on eBay and Amazon. It looks like this. Uh, there's three different variations of the tool, but the process is the same for all. Uh, it simply presses the bearing cartridge straight into the frame. Uh, if you've got a BB30, this also comes with some optional removal tools that are for BB30 only. Um, they can be used for PF30, but I'll come on to that later. I'll demonstrate how to use the, uh, these. So here's the three tools. There's BB30, which I'm going to show you today. Works with PF30, uh, 386 EVO and BB Right as well. Next up is the Shimano uh, BB90, BB95. Uh, also works with BB86, BB92. Uh, and then finally we've got the BMX uh, MID mid tool. And there's two variations of this. You've got the 19mm uh, and 22mm. And that's the inside diameter of the bearing. Uh, which also is the crank axle diameter. So the Burton Bikes bottom bracket press tool uh, is designed and precision engineered to press against the outer race of the bearing cartridge only. So there's a, a recessed inner lip on the inside of the uh, press plate. And this makes sure that it can't press the inner race of the bearing, unlike other tools. Some of the bottom brackets that I've already mentioned are contained in plastic or aluminium sleeve or a cup. So that's PF30, BB86, BB92, uh, and there are some others. Most of these are compatible with the Burton Bikes tool, but if you check your instructions, some do specifically state that you should press them in by pressing against the cup rather than the bearings directly. So please check first before you buy the tool. The tools that you'll need for the installation of new bearings in your bottom bracket is the Burton Bikes bottom bracket press tool, two spanners, and some kind of grease or locking compound. It's worth checking with your manufacturer first. Your frame material and your bearing manufacturer will decide which type of lubricant or locking compound you need. Tools that you'll need to remove your old bottom bracket first will depend on the um, type of bottom bracket that you've got. These are some optional tools that you can buy along with the BB30, PF30 tool that I sell for removal. So there's the bottom bracket removal tool which uses a hammer and some optional circlet pliers as well for BB30 or BB right with um, snap rings or circlips. So for this video I'm using uh, an upside down Boardman bike this has got BB30 uh, bottom bracket. Uh, Boardman have been using BB30 and PF30 for a good few years now. Um, first I'll show you how to use the optional removal tools. You can remove the bearings from, um, from the opposite side by just pushing them out with some kind of punch tool and a hammer, um, depending on how brave you are. If it's an expensive bike and an expensive bottom bracket then uh, the, the preferred method is to buy the correct tools. So there's two scenarios that you might have. You've either got a brand new frame with no bottom bracket installed or you're just replacing the worn bearings uh, in your existing bike. Uh, furthermore, if you're replacing your old BB, you can choose whether you want to replace them both at the same time or if you want to do one at a time. So the Burton Bikes tool can help in all these scenarios. So the removal tool, this is an optional extra with the Burton Bikes BB30 uh, bottom bracket tool. Looks like this. The way it works, we insert it into the bearing that you're trying to press out. Put some kind of punch or screwdriver on the in, through the opposite side and it rests into that notch there and then we're going to simply strike uh, the opposite side with a hammer here to push the bearing out. It's good to try and twist the tool round in between taps as you're pressing it so that you're applying force around the whole circumference of the bearing. You can't turn it all the way around, you can hear it's, it's hitting on the inside of the circlet uh, which I'll show you from the opposite side. So looking through the empty shell you can see the bearing on the opposite side and you can see the snap rings that's holding it in place. If I insert the removal tool you can see how as we twist it, you can't twist it all the way around because it's just catching the, um, the circlet there. I'm using the threaded bar that comes with the uh, Burton Bikes tool which you can do, it's a good fit. Uh, just be aware that if you're striking it with a hammer uh, there's a chance that you might deform the thread um, so you'd need to file it back down again to be able to get your nuts on later on. Uh, the no another reason why it's good to use the, um, the threaded bar that comes with the tool 
is that you can use one of the, um, the bearing plates that comes with the tool in the opposite side and this means that the punch that you're using stays exactly in the middle and doesn't move around. So we line, line it up with the removal tool, hold it firmly with one hand and then we're going to strike it with a hammer. So it's starting to come out, I'm just going to twist it around a little bit so it's pushing different sides of the cartridge. It's about halfway out now, I'm going to twist it again. And it's nearly out now. There it goes. So a quick mention at this point about um, using the removal tool for PF30. So PF30 bearings are identical to BB30 in size, but they're permanently fixed into usually plastic or sometimes an aluminium cup. So the whole unit is replaceable. You don't simply replace the bearing cartridge itself. Now the removal tool can work with PF30 because you still you've still got the inner race of the the, the, the bearing visible inside the cup and it should push it out however I should point out there is a slight risk that if you're unlucky if the cup is really really stuck in then striking the bearing from the opposite side may simply remove the bearing from the cup leave the cup in place uh, at that point you'd need to remove that cup using something like a traditional headset cup uh, removal tool so now we can see inside the shell where the bearing used to sit is the snap ring or circlip that's what the bearing pushes up against when you reinstall your new one. I recommend removing the circlips at the same time as removing the old bearings. It means you can get a really good clean in there. If you try and clean it whilst you've got that circlip there, you've got a big uh, groove there where grime and grit can, can gather. So the other optional tool that comes with the Burton Bikes bearing press tool is a circlip pliers. So on the inside of the uh, shell, there's two... Um, two holes in the circlip, you insert the pliers into and it just pulls out like that. So now the shell is completely smooth and you can get a really good clean in there, clean the circlip as well and get that back in ready for your new bearing. So to reinstall the circlip we simply do the opposite of what we did when we removed it. So squeeze together, locate into the groove and then release the pliers and just make sure that it's sprung out properly and have a good look around make sure it's the same distance into the groove all the way around. So at this stage when you've removed your first bearing cleaned up the shell I would recommend installing your first new one at this point so we've still got one of the old bearings on the opposite side um, we're going to replace um, on this side with a new one uh, I'm going to reuse the old one for the purposes of the video so the, um, the tool has two press plates. If you're installing one bearing at a time, like in this example, it doesn't matter which way around they go. So I'm going to put the larger disc on the opposite side so that you can see better from this side. So that, that disc pushes up against the, uh, the bearing that's, that's still inside there. So the, the new bearing, as, as you would be fitting, goes onto the press plate there. And as I've already pointed out, um, it can only press the outer race of the bearing cartridge, not the inner race. So we push the bearing and the press plate over the threaded bar. It does sit just inside the frame, so it's nice and centred. And on the opposite side, it can't move anywhere. So you definitely push in very straight and very true. So it's all in place, we can take two spanners and we tighten either side. So I'm going to tighten from my right hand side and as I tighten it you can see it's pushing the bearing in and it's worth noting at this stage that the only thing that's spinning at the moment is the nut on this side. So this plate is not spinning, that plate's not spinning, the bar isn't spinning, only the nut that I'm turning is actually spinning around. So you can feel when it starts to feel tight, that's when it's 
pushed up against the circle clip and we just give it a tiny bit more of a turn and back it off. Then and remove the tool. And the bearing's pushed in nice and tight up against the circle clip, nice and straight, nice and easy. So the aluminium disc that's pushing against the cartridge throughout the installation process it's only moving in and out it's not spinning against the uh, the face of the bearing cartridge at all so with one side of the bottom bracket uh, replaced with a new bearing repeat the process on the opposite side so we take the removal tool again knock that bearing out remove the circlip from that side give it a good clean and then repeat the installation process for fitting the second new bearing so if you're working with a brand new bike frame or if you've chosen to remove both uh, bearings already then you've got an empty shell. Now the Burton Bikes uh, BV tool is quite capable of pressing both bearings in at the same time. Uh, some people prefer, uh, some manufacturers recommend that you install one bearing at a time. So the Burton Bikes tool is unique and it's got this extra lip on one of the press plates. So there's a small disc and a large disc. And what that large disc does is it enables you to insert the tool into an empty shell with no bearing already in it. So this side of the shell is clean and empty and dry. This side has got grease already in it, ready for a new bearing. So we place the bearing cartridge in there. A small disc goes into it and up against it, and then there's a nut and a washer. So nip it up, and then using two spanners, so I'm going to hold on the right side and I'm going to turn on the left side so you can see. As I turn the spanner, nice and easy, gently does it pushes the bearing in really straight, the tool can't move, can't go off centre and again at this point I'll point out that the only thing that's rotating is the nut on the left hand side. So the bearing press plates both left and right completely still, they're just moving in. So as that tightens up against the circlip just give it a little bit more of a tighten and then back it off. Tool, and there's bearing number one perfectly installed. So to fit the second bearing it's just like in the video earlier when you've got a bearing on one side not the other so you can use the tool either way around so I'm going to use the smaller disc on the left so you can see better so the small disc will go up against the bearing that's already in place and then you grease the frame Put the second bearing in, large disc, nut and washer and repeat the process with the spanners.